So just talk about, let everyone know a little bit about yourself. Perfect. Well, if you had met me five years ago, you would have met a completely different version of me. I uh, was living, I guess what you would call the, 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 the life that society tells you you're meant to live. And it was quite inauthentic in that I was so great at giving the appearance that everything was fine on the surface, but underneath I had debilitating anxiety. I was working in a really stressful sort of sales job, running a national sales team you know, traveling a week out of every month, had the good paycheck, had the nice car, uh, was married, had the big, you know, rock on my finger to prove it all. And so, you know, I ticked all of the boxes and I, I felt really, um, really confused why I didn't feel like my life was right. You know, I'm like, well, I've done everything that I'm meant to do. Why aren't things, why doesn't, wasn't it feel right? And so that sent me down quite a lengthy healing journey that uh, has brought me to the position where I'm in today, which is that I completely relaunched my life. So for just under four years ago now, I left my husband and I three years ago left my job in the corporate world and that was to pursue this now uh, second chance at life that I believe that I had and spread the message that I believe that it's possible for any of us anywhere in our life to completely turn and pivot and create a new future. We can get so stuck in our old ways and just think, oh, well, it's too late for me. Uh, you know, oh, I've already gone this far down this path. It's too late for me to do anything different. And I say that it's complete crap and it's totally possible to just turn and change and I really believe that we're all born for a reason and when we find that reason we thrive and that's been um, that's been my experience and that's why you know it's so exciting to be having this conversation as well because I believe that so many of us have a purpose but we have so many fears or doubts wrapped around if that purpose could be financially viable and, um, and so I think this conversation is awesome because to have the if money were no object what would you do to have that question and have just money be out of the equation and, and focus more on how you feel and then what is possible for you when you feel that way. I think that's a much more empowering place to be. So I'm, yeah, as I said, really excited to be talking about this topic tonight. So yeah, awesome. I can feel the energy <laughs> coming through with your enthusiasm, which I love, you know, and you've lived and walked the talk and you've come through and reinvented yourself. So yeah, tell us about, tell us about it. Yeah, so basically when, when you asked me about this topic, first of all, I thought, how are we going to squeeze all of this into 20 minutes? So <laughs> I'm sorry. The other thing that I'm really conscious of is that I know that all of us lead really busy lives, so I wanted to make it as sort of succinct and as, as actionable as possible. And so I'm going to go through four key areas. So the first is around the reason we don't attract more money, so the number one reason, so you can be conscious of that and shift that. Uh, the second is about finding your true worth. And the third and fourth is about how to create more security and confidence around money and what your money story is. So lots to get through in this next little <laughs> wow. I know we want to have some time for questions as well, which is fantastic. Uh, so I wanted to also share that I was looking up a little bit of research before tonight and came across a site that referenced that about 60% of women these days worry about not having enough money for themselves in retirement. And I thought that that was a really interesting statistic because we as women, you know, this is really only kind of the second generation of women where we have actually had to be responsible for our own financial situation we're the only generation that has actually really had to work the second you know we're the second generation of women that have had to work so what that tells me is that within ourselves as women and as the collective feminine we still have so much to learn about empowerment and worth and receiving and you know for men it's just it's it's something that has been happening for for centuries right it's been they go out and they they get the money and they provide and so now women are in this space where don't even get me started on how many hats women have to wear these days but uh but but the fact that you know we're, we've got that fear of you know how am i going to live in retirement and, and what is my future and so that's my first First point is when we have something in our life that we feel negative towards generally we will do anything and everything we can to avoid that aspect so we won't face it head on so even there might have been some resistance from people watching this you know there might have been something happened that meant someone couldn't catch this webinar it's so fascinating because people don't want to look at things that make them feel uncomfortable. So if you're watching this webinar right now, or you're watching the replay, like you've gone past that, that feeling or that first step of resistance. And that's where you can start actually creating change and starting to feel better about it. So 
things that we feel negative about, we tend to avoid. But when you actually start focusing on it, you can start creating a plan. And so I wanted to talk about the number one reason we don't attract more money and abundance in life, first of all, at the base level, is how we feel about it. So if you think about, and this is for the listeners as well, how do you actually feel when you think about money? And notice the sensations when you hear the word money. Notice what happens in your physical being. Notice what words come through for you. And I put the group out in, yeah, I put the, the oh, word out. Yeah, I'm going to ask you in a sec. But yeah. I, um, I put the word out in my online community and just the feedback I got was like, I feel tension, I feel stress, I feel fear, I feel blocked, I feel stuck. And the women were just kind of sharing all of this with me. And I thought, well, that's huge. Because the number one thing your subconscious mind is always trying to do is protect you. And so if there's something that you're consciously saying, I want money, but you unconsciously, your physiological response is nausea, you know, whatever, blocked, negative, stress, your subconscious mind actually says, well, hang on, that's a bad thing. I'm going to keep that object or that thing as far away from this beautiful person as I possibly can to protect her. Because when she thinks about this thing, she feels stressed. So actually, even though she says she wants it, her body is telling me different. So we're going to keep it away. It's like a fear mechanism that kicks in. So the first thing is like getting curious. What do I currently feel when I think about money? And really exploring that and noticing. So what was one of the, I noticed your expression, Scarlett, what was one of the words that came up for you? Oh, it was, it's uncomfortable because it covers so many areas because I'm, I'm such a creative person and I love making things. So I go, oh, money, uh, money brings up all the aspects of um, difficulty for me. That's all just, you know, from past events, from, you know, all sorts of areas. And I'm not, you know, I don't like doing any budgets. I've got my business director who's like, have you looked at that budget? Yet? <laughs> so, yeah, I've got lots of stuff for that. Yeah. And so then if I were to ask you, how would you want to feel about money? What oh, I want to feel great. I do. I want to feel good. I want to feel at peace with it. And it's funny. I mean, look, I've done, as you know, you know, so much work around this area and money for me has been a big part of my soul's journey. Yeah. And I know that um, to kind of come into a place where I feel better about it, like I go, okay, what does it mean to feel good when I talk about money is a constant push pull. I can feel it, yeah. but I'm conscious of it, you know? So it'd be great to know any tips around kind of getting, I love the thing about being curious. That's really good. It's a really nice word as opposed to you have to feel good about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. And you know, it's interesting because people can say affirmations and things, but if there's still a bit of doubt, fear, you know, things going on in the background and that's always going to override the affirmations. So I'm a big advocate of working, you know, on the mental, emotional levels. And that's, you know, a lot of the modalities I work with are neuro-linguistic programming and hypnosis and things like that. They actually help dig into the subconscious and clear those things so that things actually can shift. Uh, but it's interesting because aside from what you feel, it's also about, you know, what's the mental picture that you get in your mind when you think about money as well. Ooh, mental picture. Okay. So the mental picture, oh, it's all kind of blank. I don't have any. So, okay, so something to work on. Okay. <laughs> so, so you can see that what happens is we feel sort of stressful or negative towards something, so we just ignore it. And then, like you said, it's just a blank. It's not a positive or a negative one, but how would it feel if you actually created a really beautiful picture around what it would look like for you to feel totally joyful and abundant and optimistic and you know whatever the words are for you around money and actually paint that picture you know we do vision boards for goals but you know what's your money story and what's the vision that you want for that future for you uh for me you know a big piece like for me it's it's more about freedom freedom and choices mm -hmm. is really what money represents to me and you know for me it's like oh great you know this money this means the freedom to make the decisions in my business to grow in this way to take on this staff member to go on this retreat venue it's it's like more freedom and choices that's really important to me and um and then um the third step is to really imagine also what what things you think if you had a lot of money what you think would change because one thing i've noticed is that people have this weird perception of like, oh, if I have a lot of money, I'll become arrogant. 
or if I have a lot of money, I'll lose these friends. Or if I had a lot of money, this like people have fears that things would change dramatically. And so that's another way of our kind of fears kicking in and protecting us. So literally those three steps are like the tip, tip, tip of the iceberg. <laughs> I'm such an advocate of finding out what are your beliefs? Um, what do you believe about, you know, people with lots of money are what lots of people feel like evil and all of this stuff. So there's so much juicy stuff to kind of dig into, but I uh, just really wanted to, to go through, you know, those top three points. So how you feel, what you think and what you can imagine for your future. Those are the first three steps. Any questions about those before I move on? No, is anybody, I mean, the only question I think uh, for me is that, um, is there any tool or do you find what helps people to imagine that more? Like, is there anything, because, uh, you know, you'll find out your belief and you'll see it, but actually to make the shift into um, seeing things differently. Because, you know, some people can't visualise or do it. Is there any other tip or anything that you've got? Definitely. Yeah. If people are not as visual, um, find, find something that does work. So it may be that words work better. Maybe you're, you're more auditory or it may be that the feelings really elicit that, that positive response for you. But it's basically like if you notice all of the signals that you're giving towards money. And I heard this great saying uh, that someone said, actually, you know, like if, if money were your lover, would you want to go to bed with it at night? You know, the way that you're treating it, the way that you're thinking about it, the way that you're talking about it, would it want to be in a loving, committed relationship with you? Or is it in the room next door, you know, sleeping on its own? And, and the moment it comes near you, you push it back away, you know? And so it is just energy. And that kind of comes into my second point is it is energy. And for me, money's sole purpose is to express appreciation. So when we receive money, it's someone appreciating you for this work that you're doing in your path. And when you, you know, spend money, because money, you know, energy is all about give and receive. And if we get into that hoarding mentality, like, oh, I've got to save, I can't spend money on things, then we're in that scarcity mindset and then that stops the flow. So it's really about, you know, the giving and the receiving. And so giving in the ways that you appreciate and also receiving and going, thank you, letting people appreciate you. And if there is one thing that I have noticed about women we suck at receiving money, <laughs> yes, which true. also shows how much we suck at receiving love a lot of the time as well so for me it's like a really cool piece and I actually had a client who had we worked through a lot of money stuff about a year mm -hmm. ago and one of the, the little you know tests that I had was we actually caught up face to face most of my clients are over Skype around the world but this one happened to be in my hometown so we caught up face to face and I said to her if I offered you $50 right now, would you take it? And she's like, no, why would you give me that? And I just looked at her and I'm like, okay, all the work that we've done on money, if I offered you $50 right now, would you take it? And she's like, I'd feel like I have to do something for it. And that was key because if there's one thing I know, money is energy. And when the universe, which is where this energy all comes from, when the universe is trying to give to you, do you accept regardless of where it's coming from or do you have morals and judgments and blocks and barriers and, oh, but I have to, a lot of the belief people have is you have to work hard to earn money. So if I haven't worked hard, you shouldn't be giving me $50. So, so notice all of the ways that you say no to receiving and you say no to money. And the next time, this is an activity for everyone watching this mm. at home, the next time someone offers to give you something, even if you get that first, oh, but I haven't done anything for it, or, oh, does that mean I have to do something for them? Literally just say, thank you, and just receive it. And it will probably feel really uncomfortable to begin with, but it's, it's like a, a test and a clue, you know, oh, okay, how comfortable are you with receiving this? And I've made that example bigger. I've said, you know, if, some, if someone you didn't know offered you $10,000 right now, would you take it? And nine times out of 10 people say no. And I think that's so fascinating because we've got all of these, these worries and concerns about what that would then mean and what, what control that person would have over you. But it's, um, it's pretty interesting to look at. It is. There's so much kind of taboo around, which I'll talk about in a sec to something. Um, mm -hmm. I've just got a question here from someone, which is what helps, can you see that question? What helps to go beyond the uncomfortable feeling of placing a monetary value for one's work? Ooh, that is such a good question. Question. I feel like I, from the, the way that the question is asked, it feels like you are doing what you're meant to be doing in this world. Like you're doing your soul's work. 
And for a lot of us, when we're doing our, when we are actually following our purpose, it feels really easy. And when it feels easy, we think, oh, but I haven't, I haven't worked hard for that. I should just give it away. And so many people give so much stuff away. But the most beautiful, you know, suggestion I could make is when someone is investing in you and they're expressing appreciation, they're actually investing in themselves. So the money that they're transferring to you, it's not them paying you. It's them saying, I am worth this much to have this problem solved or to have this you know, service that you're offering, not knowing exactly what you do. Uh, so it, it's, it takes it beyond you. you know, you're actually providing the channel for this person to get the solution they need and invest in themselves. And what that means for the individual is huge. For example, my, my retreat in February, my Bali retreat in February is twice the price that my first ever Bali retreat was. It's three and a half thousand dollars. And the first retreat I ever ran was 1800. And I never would have thought I would charge that much more. Right. And it's still in the scheme of things, there are people charging $10,000 for, for women's retreats in Bali. Right. But this is, you know, for me, it's a luxury venue and the women as well that have stepped up to this retreat, they're all walking into a collective energy where they've all realized I'm worth this much you know like spending this much on myself for a week on you know nourishing myself on, on making some changes in my life that's some powerful transformative energy and they know that if they went to a different Bali retreat that was maybe 800 bucks which there are you're going to be in a in an energy in a group of people who are looking to spend 800 bucks and so their value or their self-worth is around that level and I'm not saying it's a status or hierarchy thing but what I found is that when you give people the option to invest in themselves they're proving to themselves, shit, I'm really worth this. And I, I can really, um, I can really invest in myself this. And also um, the, the, the people who do pay you and value you, they get the best results as well. And you probably found that as well. So um, the uncomfortable feeling, I would explore that. And I would definitely you know, suggest I'm a huge advocate of hypnotherapy. It's what assisted me with my anxiety. I would suggest um, doing a little bit of work on exactly that feeling, like where it actually comes up for you in your body and finding out when the first time was that you ever had that feeling and then clearing that understanding what, why you created that as a physiological response, a protection mechanism, and then clear that because I know that that uncomfortable feeling that you have, that's not something that you were born with. So it's something that was learned, which means it's something that can be unlearned. And the fact that you're watching this and asking this question means it's, you know, it's, it's you've outgrown it and you're ready to let it go so that you can now step into doing more of what you're doing on a bigger scale. So great question. I and I love that answer. <laughs> it was awesome. I, I love talking. I love this. I'm so grateful that you provide this platform. Because oh, no, it's great. And it's so interesting because uh, one of the things I just wanted to share was um, when I saw recently um, a woman who's a practitioner, she's an energy healer and psychic, but she was saying to me, we're talking about the value. And I said, it's so difficult when you're doing something that you love. And there's a part of me that feels, oh, I shouldn't be paying for what I love because it's kind of fun. You know, like that's it. And she said, it's such a collective psyche from even when we're in medieval days, because when we did that healing, I mean, we burnt it, which is, I know it sounds really bizarre, but there's a collective consciousness in women, especially, I think, to kind of step up to do and express that. It's innately difficult as well, you know. I just got like a shiver all the way down the back of my head when you said that. So I definitely resonate with that. And, um, and I think, you know, we are beyond powerful and we are beyond worthy. And it's, 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 it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that we have this, right? <laughs> but it's shifting and it's changing and it's going to be a beautiful shift. And, and for me, like I, I did a talk recently and I was at a, I was at a, a kind of holistic expo and I, I had a group of people that I was running through a couple of activities. And one of the questions I asked was, you know, who here has a dream or a vision for their future? And 80, 90% of the room put their hand up. And I said, and, and out of all of you, whose vision or dream for the future is going to make this world a worse place? It's going to damage the world and the earth and the planet. And no one put their hand up. And I said, so every single person in here that has a vision or a purpose, it's actually going to improve the world, right? And they all put their hands up and said, yes. And I said, well, it is your duty to clear your money blocks. It is your duty to receive the money that can help create those projects. Clear it, like work on it, focus on it, get into it. Because people need 
that approach. At the moment, the people that are receiving all the money, they're buying Lamborghinis and, you know, I don't know what people are doing with all of that stuff, but it's probably not channeling into the, the resources and the areas that this world really needs. And, you know, we, we do live on a feminine earth. And so I think it's so interesting that the feminine and the women are the ones that, you know, we're, we're struggling with the work, worth and the financial side of things. Because if you look at the wealth of the earth, that's also struggling and the earth is that feminine energy. And so when we come into balance and we come into our power, we start to create more of these projects that are Gaia and earth focused, then that starts to, to filter through as well. But yes, that's a whole side. So, oh, I love it. I love it. So, ah, yes. so much more. And I'm conscious of time. I no, want no, to tell us <laughs> yeah, just a really quick point on accessing your true worth. Yes. This is something that will maybe help the question that got asked as well, which is a lot of people say, you know, well, how do you know how much you should actually charge for something? Because there's so many different things. And anyway, basically, if you're thinking about doing anything other than what you're doing at the time that you're doing it, you're probably not getting paid enough for what you're doing. But also, like, find out what is something that you love to do. So something that I love to do is like, go to the beach with my partner and walk our dog. We've got a really cute long haired chihuahua. He's just adorable. <laughs> and, and, and I love doing that. And it's something we do pretty much every single day. And so to find something that you love to do that takes about an hour or so, and then ask how much would someone have to pay you to not do that in a given day? So one of my clients, it was, you know, she loves reading her kid's bedtime story and kissing him goodnight. And I said, how much would someone have to pay you to not do that in one day? And she was like, oh, at least $500. I'm like, good. Well, there's an indication of what you want to be charging for what you're doing. You know, this is, this is your time. And all of the time that you're doing, spending on your purpose, going to meetings, calling clients, all of that energy that's outward, that could be energy that you're doing, you know, that, you, that you're spending sharing with your loved ones and with your family. And so you're giving in so many ways. And I see a lot of women, you know, giving and giving and giving and then they just got the empty cup and then when you are with your families there's not enough time and so yeah making sure that, that you've got that flow coming in is, is super important so find your true worth and then the last one just on creating security and confidence is actually one of the activities in my book that I talk about which is about how to calculate your daily survival rate so you talked about the B word, the budget word, and I'm definitely a big fan of that. Like create a budget and stick to it as much as you can. Obviously, like life always has little things that come up, but at least if you haven't done that, just do the numbers. Just jot down all your weekly, monthly, annual expenses and just look at where you're sitting and, and where your debt is, if you've got any, and where your savings are. And then this calculating your daily survival rate is basically a process where you add up all of the bills that you have whatever they are, like just total them up into a weekly or a fortnightly or an annual figure and then divide it back into a daily rate, to a daily figure of how much it actually costs for you to survive to, to pay on this planet, which is really weird because we're obviously the only species that have to pay to live on planet Earth, which is so strange. But, <laughs> but whatever that figure is, so say it's $100 just so it's easy for me maths-wise, you figure it out and you go, okay, just for me to survive, to pay, you know, the mortgage or the rent, the groceries, basics of things, I need $100 per day. The best thing you can do is, and businesses do this, right? They, they look at cash on hand, how, much, how many days in the bank the business has. And say Apple has, I think, two years cash in the bank. So Apple can run for two years without having any income come in. So if your daily survival rate is, say, $100 and you've got $5,000 in savings, for example, you know I can survive for 50 days even if I receive absolutely no money into my bank account. And for anyone that is in a transition stage, maybe thinking of starting your, your dream career and getting out of whatever role you're in, and this is something that I work with a lot of my clients on, is find out that, that rate and just monitor that rate every day. Because sometimes when you look at your bank account and you just see numbers, it's a little bit confusing. And this is almost for me um, like, you know, if you think about dieting, people count calories every day. This is a more achievable if you just monitor that number and make sure it's always staying the same or growing then you know like everything is fine and so when i quit my i was you know earning six figures but i just couldn't go to my old job anymore and i had to start this business it was like you know spirit earth was just like get out there start this business it needs to happen i literally would monitor that every single day and there were some weeks like after i quit my six figure job because i was so accustomed to just getting a fortnightly paycheck it was really you know something that i had done for a decade basically so to be out on my own and just have inconsistent income was so foreign and I would monitor that rate and I remember if it got down to about 
20, 22, like, and I would notice I'd start, you know, creating more things and I'd go, all right, I need to, I need to be building a lot more. And then when it would get up around the 40, 50, I'd, I'd go, okay, good, I feel relaxed. And now I prefer it to be around the 100 days and, you know, it just, it, you find a, a, a figure that feels right for you and then you don't have that that fear feeling or that, that dread feeling, it just kind of can get on with life and focus on, on bigger things. So, so many tips and activities in there. I hope that's okay. I just really wanted to give as much value as I could in that, in, in this. Oh, awesome. Uh, and, you know, that's literally under the tip of the iceberg. So. I love it. I think for me, um, a key one has been around the fact, because I think that's for a lot of people, including myself and a lot of colleagues and clients, we talk about uh, the value and what to charge and our own value. And I love that when you're doing a disservice to your clients or to someone else by undercharging, actually uh, shows that they're not um, investing in themselves. That's an incredible uh, gift today, I think, for me. Thank you to have that learning because I, it's, it is that connection and knowing that it's money and it's part of you. I mean, for me personally, I've, I'm doing a workshop around um, overcoming challenges mm -hmm. and the process that I use and one of the parts is that, in fact, the problem is not outside of yourself. The problem is 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 part of your soul's journey. So when you take that back and you take responsibility for it, you get your power back. So therefore, that's why I've realised my, whatever money issues I've had in my past is all about um, my soul's journey and how to kind of my own self-value. So that was the best gift for me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure everybody else got heaps. Um, is there any question anyone else would like to ask? I know we've got any tippy tappies like in there. Anything else, girls, boys, anything? One other thing I'll just sneak in. Oh, yes, please. Please you can talk as long as you like. <laughs> Make sure that you have a plan for the money. So, for example, do a hypothetical. If I were to receive $100,000 in the next month, what would I actually do with that money? Like, where would it go? And actually go through the process of what you would do with the hundred thousand dollars, where you would send it, what you'd put into savings, what you'd create on what project. And once you've got a plan, because money flows to whoever has the best plan for it. So if you've ever mm. bought something that you didn't need, it's because you didn't have a good plan for that money. And the person selling it to you, maybe they wanted to buy a new car or a new, you know, pay their mortgage and their plan, maybe they had to feed their kids, right? So their need for the money was greater than yours, so it pulled it from you to them. So <laughs> need and have a plan for your money right otherwise it just goes to the person who does have a plan for it and it won't be you so oh wow because i did see something that recently was of course the universe is trying to provide but you have to have a cup to hold it mm. so it's like it is that balance of having some clarity i know a lot of things what comes up for a lot of people is they want to say i want that but they feel that if they're that definitive it kind of closes it off Yes. You know, where you, you kind of, oh, I don't want to be that because I don't want to just stop there. Like, I don't want just a million because really I want 10 million. <laughs> you know? Like, what do you say? What do you think about that? I think that as, as like, I think as you achieve goals, you get momentum and then you can reset them and you can move forward with them. So I think, I think it's fine to set a goal for a million and then set it for, you know, the next, the next step once you get there. Because as you dream bigger and your dreams grow, then, then you can step to the next thing. So, but I think yeah, not wanting to limit, like a lot of us are not clear about what we want, but we're really clear on what we don't want. So a lot of people even just say like, I don't want to be worried about money anymore. So, you know, if I say, don't think of a lemon, the first thing your subconscious mind does is it, it shows you a picture of a lemon. So if you're giving clear messages, always say it in the way that you want it. So I want to feel, you know, open and optimistic and like I have possibilities and choices around money. That's a really different vision or create like subconscious image than I don't want to feel stressed. Because if you say I don't want to feel stressed, all you see is feeling stressed. I love that. Oh, there's such wonderful, valuable, you know, what a great webinar. Thank you so much. And I think everybody's, oh, here we are. Um, so we've got, thank you so much for the webinar. I really enjoyed it. Juliet, you have such a beautiful energy. Great oh. advice from Paula, yes, and Sue, so much to think about, can't wait for more. Oh, this is so exciting, thank you everybody. I'm a bit teary, that's oh. cool. Oh. The internet and this medium and that we can do these things where everyone's in the comfort of their own home. It's very Look, it's great, so welcome to have you back anytime that you're, you're open to being here because the wonderful thing I think about and what uh, that happens when a lot of our 
people get together is there's a really lovely authentic kind of energy that comes through so um so and then your energy of course is added to it thank you so much and we look forward to now people can find you on relaunch my life yeah yeah, um, you can add me on Facebook. I've got a Facebook page there and Instagram and bits and pieces. And yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Beautiful. And yes, and people can do consulting with you and all go to your retreat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I've still got a couple of spots for my Bali retreat next February. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's a six night, seven day retreat with me and beautiful women and relaunch your life. So going through five key areas of life. So health, wealth, relationships, purpose and spirituality. And then we have a day of silence in the middle as well. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a beautiful week away. I can't wait for that. You know, I always used to say, I just wish I could get paid to travel. And now I do. <laughs> so it's, you know, if you've got those weird dreams that just don't seem to make sense, I used to just say, I'd love to get paid to travel. And then it was at my last retreat this year. I was like, oh, I'm getting paid to travel. Didn't even realize that. So it's been very cool. And um, yeah, and grab a copy of my book. It's on Kindle. It's called Relaunch mm -hmm. My Life if you want it straight away or I post signed copies for $30, including postage. You can get that on my website as well. It's, um, it's a really beautiful guide to, it's got activities in it. It's, it's, it's a page turner. You know, a lot of books are very dense and information heavy. I prefer transformation and action because I think we've got all the information out there nowadays with the internet. It's not information we need. We need like applicable transformation. So yeah, grab the book and work through that and you can reach out to me as well. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. And thank you everybody for joining us. And um, we look forward to keeping on your journey and watching all the wonderful things you're creating. Thanks, Juliet. And you. See ya. Bye. Okay. Bye.